Good evening. I'm Leland Vittert on the program tonight. Today is not a surprise. No matter what you think of today's decision, it is entirely predictable. And buckle up because the aftershocks of overturning Roe and outlawing abortion might be more powerful than today's political earthquake as we look live at the Supreme Court. Democrats now have a distraction from gas prices. Will abortion prove more powerful politically with swing voters than their pocketbooks? In one week, conservatives successfully changed the country's laws on guns, schools, and abortion using the Supreme Court. We'll tell you what they want to do next. The war is coming between liberal district attorneys and red state attorney generals. Can Paxton of Texas join us with his fight against those that refuse to enforce today's ruling? But first, on point tonight, it's hard to know you are living history in the moment. We are. Today changed America in many ways we understand and in more ways that we cannot predict. Whatever you think of today's decision, the right planned for it meticulously. Literally, they planned 40 years just for today. Proof of that. Some states already passed trigger laws, meaning that the Supreme Court ruling today triggered an immediate ban on abortion. In these states, it was legal at breakfast and illegal by lunch. Planned Parenthood in Wisconsin reported sending women home from the waiting room without having an abortion. In all 26 states you see here, it's either highly likely that abortion will be restricted or fully outlawed by the end of summer. Some states are planning laws that would restrict pregnant women from traveling to states that provide abortion. This is just the beginning of restricting abortion rights. This, today, is not the end. You ain't seen nothing yet. Women are going to control their bodies. What is happening here? What is happening here? Women's fundamental health decisions are her own to make. We are in a very dangerous moment. It, it, uh, it, it broke my heart. I am spitting mad over this. The women and girls were forced to bear their rapist child. With the child, a consequence. It's a, it just, it, it just stuns me. It might be stunning, but it is not surprising. More fundamental rights could change, probably will. Remember the famous leaked opinion from two months ago? Well, that specifically said overturning Roe was limited to Roe. Today's opinion from the court included one from Justice Clarence Thomas that went a step further. It's called a concurrent opinion. It reads, in future cases, we should consider, reconsider, all of this court's substantive due process precedents, including Griswold, Lawrence, and Oberfell. Those cases protect gay marriage and the use of contraceptives. So it should come as no surprise that activist groups handed out flyers with Justice Thomas's home address and plan a rally there tonight. The smartest political minds of the Republican Party spent the past 40 years focused on planning for this moment. They told us over and over again, overturning Roe is the most important thing they will ever do. They spent billions of dollars getting here. Democrats largely focused on other issues. Let me introduce you to the puppet master of today, the ringmaster of the movement. His name is Leonard Leo. He is co-chairman of the Federalist Society. That is a conservative group focused on recruiting, training, and eventually placing conservative judges on federal courts. For most conservatives, appointing judges to overturn Roe defined politics since the 1980s. There's Mr. Leo. Think what you want of the result. Think what you want about abortion. But Leonard Leo is the man of the hour that nobody's talking about. And you should remember his face. Because Leo's judges will define American law for the next generation or more. This month, his movement won major victories on guns, school choice, and, of course, today, on abortion. The big one. Again, we pass no judgment on the court's decision. That is for you to decide. But for as surprised and angry as Democrats are, it's confusing why they are surprised. They focused on other issues over the past 40 years. Gay rights, climate change, trans rights, gun control, welfare reform, ending capital punishment, taking religion out of schools, Obamacare, climate justice, racial ex equity. Let's go back just a few months. Democrats' chosen nominees showed such concern for the issues above 
that she could not define a woman. Uh, can you provide a definition for the word woman? Can I provide a definition? Mm -hmm. No. Yeah. I can't. You can't? N not in okay. this context. So I'm not a biologist. Of Again, we pass no judgment on her answer or feelings. But if your nominee for the Supreme Court can't define a woman, losing a 40-year war in America should not come as a surprise. Compare that with Republicans. Remember Leonard Leo, head of the Federal Society, he's also author of the then-candidate Trump's famous list of promised Supreme Court picks. Tim Alberta literally wrote the book on Trump's 2016 victory. Here it is. Exit polling revealed that Supreme Court appointments were the most important factor for 21% of the electorate. Trump won those people 56 to 41. Just over 6.5 million votes were cast for Trump in Pennsylvania, Michigan, and Wisconsin, the three states that delivered that threadbare winning margin in the Electoral College. Extrapolating from the exit polls, that means 1.7 million of them were primarily voted, motivated by the Supreme Court. He won those states by a combined 78,000 votes. Consider that. Christian and conservative voters held their nose and voted for a twice-divorced philanderer because they cared so much about the Supreme Court. Whatever you think of today's decision, you better understand that dedication because they won a big battle today and for them, the war on abortion is just beginning. That's on. Thanks for watching. Go to newsnationnow.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to subscribe. Click the red button to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.